Well, now from here, I can simply simplify it and I get PR over ET one minus 0 0.5 nu. So we can see if I can find out the value for epsilon x, then I can manage to find the pressure inside the can. Now that we learn how to do it in theory, let's see how we can use it in practice using a real strain gauge. Well, well, over here I have a strain gauge. This is a strain gauge, as we talked about it before. And this is strain gauge. I run it through a Wheatstone bridge, which we discussed that, and through a, a national instrument data acquisition card. So you can see with the application which we discussed it before, if I run this application, so on this graph, you will see right now it shows a small number, a constant voltage passing through this strain gauge. If I start deforming it, so you can see a small deformation on this. If I try to play with that in different direction, so you can see how this deformation on this strain gauge can affect the voltage that pass through this strain gauge. See in one direction, or if I keep deforming it like that, as you can see, you see the change on the graph. But our goal here is, our goal here is to measure the pressure inside a can of soda. So to do so, we need to attach this strain gauge to basically to this can, to this can, which has its own process, which I've done it before. We need to clean the surface and securely glue this one to the surface, which I've done it before. Now let's use the one that I've done before. Here is the one that uh, I attach before the strain gauge. And I put this tape on to protect the wires and everything. Now what I'm planning to do is I'm gonna put a tray underneath of that. I'm gonna open this strain gauge that you see from this view. And I'm gonna run the application. So I'm gonna open up this, uh, the can and see how the change in the pressure is gonna change the strain. And then we use this information to basically calculate the strain uh, and stress or the pressure inside this can. Now, when I'm opening the can and pay attention to the graph, and so we can see how it, it changed when we open up the can. So we see a, a, a big jump. Let me stop data. So we see a, a big jump on uh, basically on the change. Let me put that one back. Um, in the value for epsilon, if we read this value from the graph and from the data that we got, so this value gives us pressure, if we substitute it here, about 0 0.31 megapascal, which is equivalent about 45 um, PSI. So we see um, uh, how we can use a simple strain gauge to measure the pressure inside a can. It was, of course, an approximation, but this is how we can use a strain gauge, basically.